Hi, I'm Patricia Greenberg, the Fitness Gourmet. Welcome to Eat Well, Live Well, Age Well. My guest today is Nancy Bruning. She's also known as Dancy Nancy and the founder <laughs> of Nancercise. Nancy's nationally recognized for her commitment to getting people fit through outdoor exercise. Her favorite piece of equipment is your own body and a park bench. I sought out Nancy because I'm in love with what she does and this very challenging environment that we're in right now, her method of gaining wellness fits right in with what we need. More and more, we're learning about the benefits of fresh air and sunshine and how it relates to our overall being. Um, the infectious disease doctors that we're hearing from now working on the front lines are urging us to get outdoors to help boost our immunity and to enhance our emotional well-being. A quote from Nancy, exercising outdoors is a better option than gyms and more fun than home alone workouts. Just be sure to follow the current public health recommendations for physical distance and mask wearing. So today, Nancy offers outdoor exercise classes for groups and individuals in the New York area. Are you exclusive to Fort Tryon Park, Nancy? I am at the moment. Yes. Okay. COVID, but. So, um, and she also offers programs that in, include weight management, entire lifestyle makeovers, and she is a huge advocate for keeping fit as we age. Um, she trains others to be outdoor fitness leaders and helps communities turn their parks into green gyms via her fitness mapping system, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Nancy, I'm so happy you're here. I'm, I'm so excited to get into this conversation. I'm so tell us, tell us about how your, your journey to becoming the go-to person for fitness in the park. All right, well, I'll, I'll try to give you the short version because okay. I'm <laughs> you know, short, I'm yeah. used to very long stories. Um, I always, I grew up in New York City, first of all. I grew up in New York City and I, I'm used to playing in the streets. I'm used to playing in the parks. I had a backyard. Uh, you know, my parents were immigrants. We didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't have classes, nothing fancy. So I'm, all, I'm and I'm half Dutch, which means I'm very much into uh, uh, low cost versions of things and do it yourself kinds of things. So that's sort of the, the background. Um, eventually, I, uh, you know, long leap forward, I started writing books. Um, I was writing books um, about uh, medicine and kind of mainstream uh, topics. And then I got into more into, um, uh, I wouldn't Sometimes you would think they were unconventional, but I like to say complementary, because I never toss uh, Western medicine, mainstream medicine out the window. I think you should use whatever is appropriate at the time. So I started writing about complementary and um, medicine and realized that exercise is an important part of that. And then I realized that being out in nature was also an important part of complementary medicine. There are, uh, many, many uh, studies and more happening all the time that show that nature is really, really important and it adds something to exercise. We don't have to go into how important exercise is in terms of healthy aging and just health in, in general. I think everybody knows that by now. Um, but you know, uh, I, I eventually became uh, a little disillusioned with, with publishing and some of my, not disillusioned with my co-authors, but I, I was a little bit frustrated. I would write, uh, some of the books were my own, but I was getting more and more uh, okay. work with uh, with other people. And sometimes I didn't really 100% agree with them or I wanted to take the book in a little bit different direction. So I became, well, I should, I should just get my own medical degree or a science degree because I only had an art degree. Um, always interested in science. So I, you know, I could read my way around um, these, uh, these scientific journals, but I wanted a degree so that uh, it would lend more to uh, more authority to what I was doing. So I went to school um, at the uh, tender age of fifty, <laughs> and I got my um, I got my degree, my uh, master's degree, at uh, Hunter College, which is part of the City University of New York, and. Um, at that time, there was a huge realization, oh my God, obesity is rampant, diabetes is rampant, heart disease is rampant, they're all connected. Exercise is the perfect antidote to all of that. So that was my, that's the direction I went in. Around the same time, I uh, became the president of a parks association. So you see it all kind of 
parks, health, exercise, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was 50, so I was getting a little bit interested in, you know, how to keep this up. Um, you mentioned earlier that you uh, were running marathons. I never did that, but, you know, I got into some pretty hardcore fitness and I thought, yeah, you know, that's probably not going to happen forever. <laughs> so um, let's find something else that um, that is as effective, but maybe more gentle. And so I came up with this, um, this idea to, to do walk, fitness walking classes in, in parks. And coincidentally to that, the parks commissioner at the time was interested in the same thing. Like, you know how sometimes the air, the idea is just in the air. Yes, absolutely. So um, uh, someone I knew at parks put me together with him at parks and um, we, had, we had a lovely talk and uh, he decided to, to institute a whole program, a citywide program of um, outdoor exercise, um, including children. So I, I don't work with, with kids, so it was this huge program. So I was, I was one of the uh, instructors, I was one of the team members at a park in my neighborhood uh, for adults. And then there were all these other programs um, for, for kids. And so that was a hugely successful program. We had like 50 people in a class. It was wow. amazing, yeah. And um, I mean, I don't know, maybe you're, I don't know if your, your fans are interested in this, but there was one woman who would come late all the time. We did three classes in a row. We were a team of five instructors. We did these classes in a row and she was always, always late. And I was like, can't you ever get here on time? And I didn't say that to her, but I was thinking it and I mentioned it to one of the other participants and she said, you know, she's homeless. And her nephew, she's the caretaker for her nephew and he's in jail. And that's what she's dealing with. And she would come to my class. So it's monumentous that she got there. Never that mind. she got there at all. I know. And I felt, you know, I'm so glad I didn't say anything directly to her because I found out that, oh my God, she's here at all. This is, this is yeah. so fantastic. But, you know, this was her her mental right. therapy for herself because she was under so much stress. And I'm get, actually getting chills just thinking about it now. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know it was, it, 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 it's amazing to, you know, you don't know what people's journey are. And, and yeah, exactly. I was going to ask you, I do uh, want to ask you about the nuts and bolts of your classes because I sure. think it's interesting. I know, I'm going blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that was the short <laughs> version. <laughs> we have a, a nationwide audience and I want be I want people to be able to mm -hmm. take away some tidbits, you know, for their own community, sure. for sure. That they can actually use. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I wanted to, yeah. um, personally, I'm very, very interested, and I think our listeners are as well, is are you seeing a lot of progress in people as you know them over time, that they're starting at 50, they're starting at 55, that you mentioned gentle fitness as opposed yeah. to going in full bore and then hurting yourself or getting burned out or losing interest. So yeah. tell me some of the, I, I like these stories. They're interesting <laughs> of, of the progression. I could, write, I could write a book. Yeah, and you should. Right? Keep, keep writing. Keep mm. writing about it. Absolutely. Um, so um, somewhat related to that, I just want to say that my, my classes, everyone comes to my classes, all ages. I've had young parents with their seven-year-old kids come to my class and they do the exercises right? The kids are doing the exercises. They love them. Um, so, uh, and just this morning, actually in the class, I had one woman say, well, what's going on here? Because we meet in the park. It's like, it's totally visible to everybody. And that's how a lot of people come. They just show up. They're like in the park and they go, what are you doing? And I go, oh, come on, I'll show you, you know, and then they take the class and they go, wow. <laughs> so um, it was this woman who uh, turns out she's 83 years old. She said, what's going on here? And I said, well, it's a class, blah, blah, blah. You want to join us and, you know, just try it out. No obligation. It's free. Come take, come take the class. So she took the class for the first 15 minutes because she hadn't been doing very much exercise at all. Yeah. She had some illness and she, not COVID, but she had some illness and she had some injuries and stuff. So she was starting out very gentle. So she, she did my whole warm up, and um, she said, oh my God, you're such a great teacher. You should, you should actually do this for a living <laughs> you think <laughs> um but anyway so um now i forgot your question uh how well, do i think that, that you this you know you don't have to do too much but the success right. stories of people coming right. and joining right. you 
benefit. So some people start where they can barely, you know, even not, not, not even touch their knees, let alone touch their toes, or their balance is really off. So, you know, I talk about, I uh, talk about and demonstrate um, stretching, balance and, and strengthening. And then there's also a cardio component because we have hills in our park and we go up and down the hills and the stairs. So it's, you know, it's a total, it's a total program. Um, so uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people that couldn't, you know, there were very leery, leery, they couldn't maybe even do one push up, and we do everything modified, everything is tailored to whatever people can do. Uh, you know, I do push them a little bit to, you know, go a little bit beyond. Sure. Um, but I've never had a single injury, um, and I've been teaching since 2002, so. Amazing, amazing, pretty good. amazing track. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, uh, here's another story. I had one woman, she was older, and I was on the parallel bars at the end of the class. I do parallel bars, it's like free play. So first they're like, play? I don't know how to play. It's like, yes, you do. Come on, you remember. And then I'd show them a couple of things. And there was this one woman who said, oh, I can't do that. And I said, you can't do what? Show me what you can't do. So she said, well, I can't do that thing where your arms are and you're, and you're holding yourself up. And then, and you know, you're, you're, you're circling your legs. And I said, but you just did it. So she said, oh my God, I'm doing it. And it was great. It was like the sky opening, like, you know, first cloudy sky and then the oh, sun comes yeah, out. Yeah. It, it, the smile. So, you know, I get things like that all the time. I get got like, I have this guy that twirls around. He's in his seventies and he twirls, he does twirls on the bar. Um, and, but, but, you know, one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, yardsticks is we, as I said, we have these hills and we have one really big hill that I, basically do every for every class and that's the telltale because so, someone will start and they'll be way at the end of the class and uh you know they're going like oh my god this hill and then a couple of weeks later they're like in the middle of the class right and then a couple of weeks later they're right up in the front and they go wow this is an amazing this is amazing i never thought i'd get up this hill and then when people would go away on vacation and then come back and they'd be deconditioned Mm -hmm. the hill would always uh that would be the yardstick they go yes i'm back i, I can do the hill. Add, yeah i want to add some science into that nancy which i tell people over and over again mm -hmm. if you're deconditioned your lungs and your heart will bounce back you just yeah. have to make that effort to go back in again they don't worry yeah you know, i mean there's a point with certain conditions you don't want to hurt yourself but in general you can mm -hmm. you can get it back at any age so mm -hmm. walk us through a typical workout in the park Glad you asked, because we're kind of going in that direction anyway. Yes. So the way I do the class, and this developed out of the other classes, that, so that first year that I did, that was uh, with the Parks Commissioner, um, I had uh, four other people, four other instructors in my class, and they came from very, very different backgrounds. One was dance, one worked with kids, um, the other one was, was like, Oh, a diehard uh, rollerblader, um, and they all brought their uh, their expertise and their point of view and their talents to the class, and so we all contributed something. It's like a little potluck of of exercises. So I took the best of all these things, and I kind of put them together. And be, you know, pre-COVID was one thing because what we do is we. Um, the warm up, we we uh, have our arms out and we're holding each other up in a circle. Now we can't do that right now, so that's how I did uh, a lot of balancing exercises. And then if they wanted to let go, they could let go. But they we always had people to hold each other up. So I start with a warm up, which includes balancing exercises. And we're you know we usually start out in a circle. Now we're just all spread out. We have you know a huge park, so we can really spread out. And it's on a kind of a an overlook, it's a platform, so we have the, an amazing view, trees overhead, uh, there's a path that goes alongside, so we're not in anybody's way and they're not in our way, we're kind of off to the side, which is really important. You could do it on a lawn, you could, you know, as long as you have a big patch of something, if, if you're in a class, if you're by yourself, you know, you just have a little space. So we start out with the, with the stretching, and I have some brain games that I add to that. Um, so, you know, using opposites and using memory, uh, we have, I have little, little games with, uh, with names and numbers and things like that that we do. And then we move on from there and we take a walk and, we, and then we stop. And I do lower body exercises and I have a whole palette of lower body exercises that I vary. 
they kind of come in, in groups and I do like, I'll do this group on Tuesday and then I'll do the next group on Thursday and Saturday like that. So uh, we do lower body and then we walk again and all the while looking at this beautiful view. <laughs> and, um, and then we do, I stop and I do abdominal exercises on a bench. And again, I have, you know, entire menu of, uh, of abdominal exercises that I, that I vary. Uh, if the benches are wet, yeah. we do standing abs. I was going to ask you, what are the, ver the like, because um, this is so intriguing to me, what are the variations on a bench? Do you have leg lifts or, because um, I'd imagine someone who's older and frail, that would be challenging. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to get <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, Everybody listening buys this book. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it depends on how many people you are. If you're just you, if you're just your, you and your friend or your spouse or whatever, your partner, um, if you're a small group, you know, it varies different things you can do. Like if you can, if you can lie on the whole bench, uh -huh. there are things that you can do in a class. I'm not going to do that because they can't right. see me. There's not that much space. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, in, you know, in the book I have, I also divided by body parts. So there's like, you know, 20 of these, uh, kinds of exercises is 20 abdominal exercises, 20 leg, you know, whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we use the front of the bench. We use the seat of the bench. Uh, you know, we, uh, we really are creative. And then we also have walls in the park. So I use walls for the push-ups. But you could also use the bench for the push-ups. There's two levels on a bench, so you can do easier ones or more difficult ones. That's what I say. We you know, we vary it, um, but we're never on the floor. We're never on the ground. Does so Fort then after, oh sorry. That's okay. Does Fort Tryon Park have um, the outdoor uh, gym equipment like a lot of parks put out? It has. So it has two playgrounds. Okay. One of the playgrounds was recently redone and I was on the design committee. Okay. So yes, we have uh, an exercise area for, well, first of all, you know, little kids and that's just like playground equipment because they don't know from exercise. They just play, right? Sure. Um, so we have that for the little kids and there's two age groups uh, to keep them separated because they, you know, they need, they need different things. And we also have something for handicapped children as well. Yeah. And then we have a teen area and then we have an adult area. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, and all of that was designed, was designed with, you know, enough space around so you can, we have these, these young guys, mostly guys. Now girls are getting, gals are getting, girls, we're getting, <laughs> gals are getting involved. Um, they're called bar stars. And they use the bar equipment and they do pull-ups. Oh, wow. And, okay. and, uh, and uh, what do they call them now? Um, flags, I think they call them, where their body is perpendicular. They're out like this and, they're, and their body's like this. Yeah. I cannot do that. They yeah. do handstands. They do amazing things. They're like acrobats. They're like show people. Um, so we have those kinds of bars as well for, for them. So, wow. yeah, so really uh, amazing, uh, creative stuff. And then we have another playground where there's very, there's, it's like old equipment. This play, that one playground was just redone. So it's all the most modern stuff. This new one, this old one just has basically bars and monkey bars, jungle gym, that kind of thing. That's going to be redone, uh, at you some know, point in the future. Even as an adult, Nancy, I love to, um, there's a couple of things that I think we need to address with people when they're older is they're embarrassed mm -hmm. or afraid to engage in child play. Like you said, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how to play. Yeah. Uh, I have no qualms going and doing the monkey bars because I'm constantly wanting to strengthen my upper my body. Favorite thing when I was a kid. And um, if you tear that down and build a new one, make sure there's a monkey bar there for people to climb on, right? Um, but getting past that, uh, people being afraid or mm -hmm. that somebody's looking, I think, mm -hmm. is, is always uh, very important. Um, so you get out there every day and, you know, you, with yourself as well as, as your, your clients or your participants and seems like you're attracting people, just, you like the Pied Piper. You just walk through the park and people start to follow. And it's Pretty amazing. much. Yeah. And it's so funny because I've been doing it for so long that people... So people kind of cycle through the class. They, they take the class for a while and then they leave and then they come back and then they leave and their lives change and, you know, whatever. Sometimes, you know, they go off and get married and they bring their spouse into the class or, but I see people, because I'm, I'm so well known now that when people see me, even if I'm not doing anything, they'll start 
<laughs> doing this with their arms, you know, or yeah. <laughs> it's like Pavlov's dogs. It's like, not just, don't just walk, do something. <laughs> and I mean, again, another plug I want to say um, is that you don't need gym equipment and you don't even need a yoga mat. And no. just, an, I always say an investment in a good pair of walking or running shoes yeah. that are very comfortable and comfortable clothing. Um, mm -hmm. And you can do this anywhere, anytime. Yeah. You know, I, Nancy, you're the original forest bather. I mean, that is the new the new, it's, you know, the Japanese concept yep. of going into the forest and breathing deeply and recentering and realigning. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing so much research on that. Yep. That's why I walk in my neighborhood every single day. Uh, but I really like to go to the park and I like to stair climb. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one section in our area called Silver Lake and it's called the Secret Staircases. And mm -hmm. there's been hundreds of steps everywhere. And some of them are great. Yep. Have canopies of trees over them because that area of LA is so hilly. People rely on the stairs to go to the store and to uh, yeah. move about the neighborhood. So I go there. Just like in Italy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just like in Italy. That that's our our uh, our old school way of, of getting fitness. We don't need no stinking well. gyms. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so um, tell us, you know, a little bit about the extra benefits that you get from exercising outdoors, especially mm -hmm. in a park setting. I mean, there's yeah. sunshine well, in the air, but there's. <sighs> You know, I mean, where do I begin? It's almost like you double your pleasure, double your fun. You get double the benefits by being out in nature because it's it's been shown how people just naturally relax. And there's a whole bunch of different studies. Some of them use pictures of nature. Some of them you're out in nature. Some of them it's 10 minutes. Some of it's five minutes. Some of it's a half an hour. Every single thing has been shown, <laughs> even if it's like, you just think of a tree, you feel better already. You know, it's like the whole spectrum, and it's you know, it's a, it's a psychological thing because um, the uh, the our species, Homo sapiens, you know, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years before we had cities and cars and video, we had trees and we had grass and we basically lived outdoors most of the time we spent our species, right, spent outdoors. So we're adapted to that. Our genetic makeup is adapted to that. And now it's, well, not now, but, you know, until COVID, it was flipped where everybody spent five minutes outdoors and the rest of their lives indoors. It used to be five minutes in the cave and then, you know, the rest of the day outside doing your thing, getting your food, socializing, dancing, whatever, you know, whatever you did. Um, so we're nat we naturally crave and we naturally need nature. Some people even call it vitamin N. And there's work done even with children. It's called nature deficit disorder. It's an actual yes. disorder where they've, they've shown that kids do better academically and psychologically if they have time outdoors playing. Um, so, you know, mentally, physically, you're breathing fresher air, you're getting vitamin D, which is really important uh, always, uh, but especially now because there's some indication that vitamin D and COVID are connected. If you yes, have yes, vitamin D, mm -hmm. and if you add vitamin D and vitamin C to the, to the regimen, the symptoms tend to go away faster and uh, be, be lessened. Um, so, and it, you know, Absolutely, you need vitamin D under all circumstances, and wouldn't it be great if it actually helps in this particular case? Um, but you know, the other thing is uh, with forest bathing, I, I have to get my mother in here because <laughs> she grew up in Germany near a pine forest. Oh wow! And the wow. Jap yeah, and so the Japanese forest bathing is more directed towards pine forests specifically because of the smell. So there's like aromatherapy going on. And maybe there's some other volatile, you know, chemicals in the air uh, from trees, because trees, you know, have amazing lives of their own and they communicate and they release molecules and who knows, you know, maybe they're talking to us on some level. Um, I have a lot of pictures of me hugging a tree, so. <laughs> You know, I want to say that, um, you know, because people are listening all over, is that just what you said earlier, it doesn't matter if it's five minutes or 20 minutes or two hours, just get out and find 
uh, some foliage to be around. Yeah. It yeah. really, really calms your body down. Yeah. Um, it, there's a lot of, you know, I was just in, in New England and the lush, lush, lush area of trees. Mm -hmm. um, in California, we have the Redwood Forest up in Northern California. If you can yeah. make a car trip up there and please don't be afraid to go outside. COVID is not, uh, you know, densely in the area, you can take precautions, but get out, get some sunlight yeah. and breathe some fresh air. It's so critical. And lastly, yeah. if you're in the New York area and you want to take Nancy's classes in person, they're held at Fort Tryon Park on the Upper West Side of Manhattan in New York. And um, you can also buy her wonderful book, Nancercise, 101 Things to Do on a Park Bench. So Nancy, you're at www.nancercise.net, N-A-N, C E R C I S E. Did I do that right? Dot net. Yeah, and we will, we will, yeah, we, we will post it. Uh, you can also contact her at www.nancybruning, Nancy B R U N I N G dot net. And in closing, Nancy, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I'm inspired just by listening to you, you know. Um, my class. <laughs> yeah, I will. And when I'm when we're back here. in the New York area, but I also, lastly, before we get off, can People do um, a Zoom or distant, distance conferencing with you to learn how to set up classes in their area? Well, I haven't done it yet, but if I get people interested, you know, certainly I'm willing to do that. So please feel free to contact Nancy at her website and see if you can arrange that. Nancy, thank you again so, so much for being here. Love, love, love.